I'm a visual artist, a painter. I work with different mediums, like various mediums. Um, I'm not just an artist who is stick to a medium or a particular way of painting. So I'm very, I'm a multidisciplinary artist. So I paint, I, I can paint on anything, but I'm from Edo. I'm born in Edo, but yeah. basically I base in Lagos. I'm presently on the Assistant General Secretary of Society of Nigerian Artists, Lagos State Chapter. Basically, for me, I won't say it's something I started when I was small. No, it wasn't. It was something I discovered like along the line because I think I was I was in my family I was the the holy person that that was into the heart thing at the initial stage. So it felt a bit weird, weird to just say you want to study painting like in a university and all. So that was how it started. But I got encouragement from my mom and my siblings. Then I pushed it further. Through College of Education, um, FCT Akoka, I studied painting and graphics. My major was painting, then I moved to University of Lagos for my painting, for my BS, for my BA. For me as an artist, um, a lot of things inspires me. I, I don't have a particular thing that inspires my heart. Because to me, as I'm looking at you now, I'm, I'm studying the light on your face, the mood you're in. Like, as I'm looking at everybody presently now, I could see different mood. So those mood, those people's reaction towards things, environmental issues, stories, backstories that people don't want to talk about, I love to talk about them. I, it even gets me more interest. Like it, it takes my attention very well. Like things people don't want to talk about, I want to talk about them. Or not that they don't even want to talk about, they don't even know that those things exist. I want to bring them to life. So basically, Everything inspires me. I might be walking and I just see something on the, on the car, me, or someone, the way somebody's looking or the way. My inspiration is just endless for me. I'm very restless, to be sincere as an artist. So I don't draw my inspiration from just one source. For me, that's one thing I'm saying, like, every second has its own mood. Do you understand? And emotions affect people's mood, yeah. That's why uh, you might be thinking of something now. It's, it's showing on your face, but you, you won't know. As an artist, I capture this thing. Um, in order to capture the, the essence of this, um, this show for this particular event, um, because it's basically for good. And I was like, the, the other one that has to do with peer of pressure, I don't know if you've seen them like that has solid gold, that the goods are embossed. Um, I use different materials, like um, a mixed media, not just um, oil on canvas alone. I introduce acrylic, sawdust, uh, um, different mediums, basically. So for this exhibition, um, it's majorly acrylic, um, oil on canvas with a touch of acrylic because Oil doesn't have gold, and I really want my. I want you to see the essence of the gold. I don't know if you understand. I want you to. I want the gold to be, f like, felt like it feels like a real gold. But oil doesn't have a gold, so I needed to put a touch of acrylic on. On the gold, then I fixed it. That's the most interesting part because when I was introduced to, I was introduced to something. Uh, I needed to make a research. Believe me, it's, to. Um, I think we are in the seventh month. I've been, I've been researching on this for like, since like February or January or so, about Mansa Musa. So I had to go all the way to Mali. So yeah, I, yeah no, not like go, I didn't go there. <laughs> no, 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 like, yeah, when I say I had to go all the way, I mean like, I, for, for like a period of time, I have to zinc my life with, as in studying Mali. And when I'm talking about studying Mali, I'm not even talking about 100 years ago. I'm talking about 500, as in 13 centuries ago. Like, so I had to study them, what they do, how do they relate with gold? What does, what does gold have to do with them? That was when I even discovered Mansa Musa. It's one of, not until now, I don't, I don't know anything about Mansa Musa. And I, I felt I knew a lot. That was when I realized that I mean, there, is a, there is a lot to learn from history, like Mansa Musa was, was the richest. Even, so they talk about King Solomon as the richest. Some, some, some researchers were still saying that this guy, this man called Mansa Musa, the king Mansa Musa, 
is richer than Solomon. There were, there were arguments, like strong arguments with evidence to prove. So um, the, it's just, it introduced me that Africa is rich in terms of gold. And believe me, uh, the, northern, the northern part of Nigeria has, has really influenced a lot when it comes to, because Masa Musa was always trading with the, the northerners, like with the Western world. He was always here doing business. And all. So that was what actually caught my interest. And if you look at most of the paintings, you will see that each of them has something that has to talk about gold when you look at them. Like the, the, and most of the women, most of the women has more to say about the gold because it was really for them. The men are warriors, they, are, they, do, they do business of gold, but the women actually showcase this gold. I don't know if you understand what I'm trying to say. So when you look at most of my paintings that I have in here, the women are, are really heavily em, embedded with gold, and those goods are not the normal one we use now, original gold. So and I have the one of Mansa Musa when he was in Mecca, and how he was able to even, when he was even traveling to Egypt, on his way to Egypt, the way he was distributing gold to people, to people he was meeting, he wrecked the economy of Mecca within a month. So you can imagine how rich this man is. And this man is an African man. So that alone is a, is a very great story that we can sell to the world. Presently now I have um, um, 12 paintings I'm showcasing here two from last year's event, um, that's 2019 painting, then we have 10 from this year's event presently. So basically in the museum now, I have 19, um, 12 paintings showcased here. Can you tell us a little bit um, something, maybe a story about each of the uh, Yeah, um, if, assuming we could just move around and just see. So like the, this one on my back actually, like this one at my back, it's about Mansa Musa. When he went to Mecca, do you understand? You could, he's a very simple man. He's the, he doesn't even use gold. If you check all around my painting, you will see that the way I depicted Mansa Musa, you will even wonder if a man that is as rich as this in gold doesn't even wear gold. You can't see gold on him. He's, he's, he's always on, um, uh, what's it called? Animal skin, slippers, and he's, a, and he's one of the richest. So you could see when, when when he was talking to people in Mecca here, he's a very humble man. In here, I have um, more like three sections. No, four sections, actually. The one that has to talk about the um, craftsmen, how they make good. Like, a whole lot of people feel like when you, when you just see good, you are, you, you'll be able to recognize it. No, but there is a process good has to pass through, through the craftsmen. So I, I was able to showcase that here. I have one of the paintings here. Then um, I was able to talk about the Fulani, because the Fulani parts in gold, they were, they were always using these things. So I had to like bring them in. Then um, the Mali woman too, the Malian woman, I, I had to bring them in. So basically, that's for the woman. Then the section of Mansa Musa, I have um, about four paintings. I think that's the largest painting because the, the whole exhibition is about him, actually. So I have the one when he was in Mecca. Then I have the one when um, he was on his way to um, Egypt. Okay, so in this room, you could, you could see that we have less of gold here. And this is Mansa Musa. This room talk about Mansa Musa. This was when he was in his house in this castle. You could see how beautiful the castle is. Then um, he has gold all around him. But him himself is not putting on anything like gold. Then watch his, um, his shoe. It's not like, it's, it's a skin, it's a um, goat skin kind of shoe. It's a very simple man and a very powerful man. And this was when he was going to um, Egypt. You could see all this entourage uh, with gold, and oh yeah, so sorry. He's, he's, a, he's one of the most powerful man in the world as a den. Like nobody. As a, when he was going, this was when he was going to this was when he was going to um, Egypt. And you, you we know that presently Egypt was very powerful as I want time, but then Mali already has the money and the power with this man Mansa Musa. And so this uh, this the third one is when uh, it was in Cairo because that's like 
the, the Malian state where this is Mansa Musa and he's, he's a very rich king. Um, the people respect him a lot because he's very humble and very powerful. And you could see that there is nothing like gold in this, but it shows a very respectable man in his hometown. Okay. <laughs>